Hi everyone, welcome to a new episode of The View podcast, our podcast series on leaders in retail. The fashion industry has seen a gamut of apps and websites that offer alternative ways to build a wardrobe without buying new clothes. The fashion rental concept pioneered by Rent the Runway has been adapted by retailers across the globe, including Urban Outfitters, Bloomingdale's, and Express. Sites like ThreadUp, Yerdle, Depop, and The Real Real have also brought the secondhand clothing market online with peer-to-peer selling. You could almost argue that these brands are removing some of the stigma associated with carrying a used designer bag or buying a dress being worn by someone else. And in that way, we have a podcast guest that's championing this very model in UK. Meet Ishita Cabra Davies, the founder of Buy Rotation, which she incidentally calls the Airbnb of fashion. Buy Rotation is an open marketplace for users living in London. Anyone can join to lend or rent their clothes with some loose guidelines. No high street items and clothes must have a value of at least £100. Before funding Buy Rotation, Ishita worked as an investment banker on credit strategies, hedge funds, and portfolio management companies. Welcome, Ishita. Hey, Akshara. Thanks for having me on the podcast. Fantastic. Um, so what you're doing with Buy Rotation is very exciting. The rental market is you know, clearly blowing up. So why did you start this company and uh, what problem were you looking to solve with Buy Rotation? Um, it came from a personal experience, kind of a first world problem, if you ask me. Um, I was planning my honeymoon last year in November, and you know I had the spreadsheet open where we were planning our routes for you know where how we were going to get around Rajasthan, which is where I'm born, where I was born as well, and uh, you know where we were going to stay, where we were going to eat, and you know I started looking on Instagram for you know the kind of outfits I could wear to take cool photos. Because, you know, it's all about outfit of the day and all those photo opportunities, especially in a beautiful place like Rajasthan. And that's when I started thinking about all these influencers and, you know, celebrities and people just wearing clothing just, you know, for the sake of one photo. And I guess I was also part of that, you know, part of that group where I felt very guilty about it when I went to Rajasthan during my honeymoon and saw the amount of textile waste that was, um, you know, in my homeland. And that made me feel like I was part of the problem. And, you know, I I just had to change myself and also find a way to, you know, get other people to share their wardrobes and be part of the solution. Right. So can you tell us then how, you know, the idea came about? So when you came back from your trip in Rajasthan, how did the idea of the whole peer-to-peer model come about? How did you execute the whole thing? And, you know, tell us a little bit also from your, in your own words, what buy rotation is really all about. Yeah, so I guess when I started looking more into fashion rental and how, you know, we should stop buying so many new clothes just for the sake again of that one photo, um, I started looking at obviously Rent the Runway, which, you know, has unicorn status as of early this year, and start thinking about how there are a lot of fashion rental companies that have inventory, you know, be it sort of your physical boutique store that's on the high street. Um, or, you know, existing sort of fashion rental companies online that seem quite outdated with all the stock they had as well. And that's when I start thinking about, you know, how I've been staying in Airbnbs on my holidays and how I usually always take an Uber rather than a black black cab because it's more cost effective, how I don't really mind sharing. And that's when I start looking into companies such as Fat Llama, which I think um, it was started in the UK three years ago where the tagline is basically rent anything and that's when I start thinking about you know what if I could share my clothing with my friends and you know maybe even strangers and also make money on my wardrobe and be able to rent from their wardrobes directly and then you know we had a lot of um sort of we had a lot of um news flow coming in from the sustainability movement especially in the UK um, thanks to the Extinction Rebellion that you know started last October, and now we've also got Greta Thunberg, who's you know made a huge noise about it right. too. So I think we've been lucky in that we started at a time where everyone's become more conscious about the environment, and especially in the fashion industry as well. Which you know we've all heard about the uh, collapse in Bangladesh, the Rana Plaza collapse um, six years ago, and I think people were talking about it then, but I think. That there continues to be a lot of exploitation of, you know, the um, the workforce in countries that are producing all this textile. So I right. felt like all of it sort of, you know, it just made sense and it seemed to be a win, win, win. 
um, you know, uh, how we how we position by rotation is that it's for the pragmatic individual who loves fashion, you know, they're style conscious, but at the same same time, they've become more and more aware of the environmental footprint. So I guess the ideal, you know, um, user of by rotation or rotator, as we call them, uh, would be someone such as myself. So I, I did actually build this product, you know, for myself. And, um, you know, we, we've got a big, uh, our core values are in community and sustainability, where we're open to everyone. We don't have any waiting lists or subscription fees. It's for all genders. Um, and we're actually rolling this out to the rest of the UK. And well, you know, hopefully one day, you know, globally. So it, it's very, it, it's kind of a way to do good for the planet, your wardrobe and wallet at the same time. Absolutely. And, um, you know, I completely agree with you in that the new generation of shoppers are obviously a lot more conscious. You know, I just, um, I think I read somewhere in a Nielsen report that a good 30 to 40 percent of consumers, even in the U.S., are willing to pay a lot more for brands that mm-hmm. are transparent and more environmentally friendly and sustainable. Uh, you know, so they're clearly a lot more concerned about wastage and usage and impact. Mm-hmm. So what kind of responses are you getting from your shoppers around the biorotation concept it, itself? You know, what is it that they love about biorotation? Yeah, I think it's so far, it's we've got an amazing traction, um, not just, you know, in press, but also in our users. You know, we've grown a lot in the past five and a half, six months that we launched and um, it's been amazing to see how many people have talked about their mindsets, sh- mind- mindsets shifting. Um, mm-hmm. You know, you've got a lot of people, you know, saying, oh, I never knew there was such a thing. But now that I think about it, it just makes sense. And, you know, it, it, it's everyone sort of like putting two and two. And sometimes it takes a while to get them around to do a transaction. But, you know, as soon as they see the, something that they like on it, you know, we've seen a lot of transactions go through with people saying, I'm a first time renter. Um, you know, could you explain more how this works? But everyone yeah. so far has had a great experience. And I think people are coming around the fact that, you know, they are living in other people's beds when they stay in Airbnb, Airbnbs. And, you know, they, they are taking other people's cars when they take an Uber. So it kind of just makes sense to also do that with fashion, which tends to be, you know, something that we consume. It's one of the things that we spend most of our household income on, at least in the UK, Um, and I think UK in particular has a very big problem with fast fashion in, um, you know, in this side of the world where there are a lot of, um, retailers and even e-tailers such as ASOS, um, misguided, pretty little thing, all of these that, um, you know, create very cheap clothing, such as a one pound bikini, um, made by workers in developing countries as they call it. And, you know, and they, and people don't kind of realize the real and true cost behind all this clothing. So I think in a way, I always, I almost feel like buy rotation is a great way for people to stop buying so much fast fashion and instead put that amount towards renting a quality piece of clothing that they just need to sort of wear for, you know, for a particular event or a particular amount of days and, and, you know, not have to hold on to it. So yeah, it's been a very convenient and accessible concept, which I think um, a lot of a lot of our audience has found has resonated with. Right, that's interesting. Um, and you know, I'd like to talk to you a little bit about how how does the process of rotating work? You know, let's say I've a dress that I'm not really mm-hmm. fond of at the moment, but it's also you know a designer piece, so I could potentially earn from it. How does that process work? Do you take a picture and send it to someone in the team? Um, and, you know, similarly, how does that work with renting for a brand? Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, so we actually very, um, we're always sort of uh, describing our UX sort of, um, you know, rent and lend within two minutes, uh, under two minutes, sorry. And we say that because our, our mobile app which just launched three weeks ago. Um, and I think, you know, you might have seen that it was covered in the business of Montreal right. and Vogue and the Guardian. Vogue. Yes, I did. Yeah, amongst the recent ones, which is congratulations on that by the way thank you um yeah i didn't quite realize what a big deal it was but um yeah it turns out you know it's been great in terms of credibility again but um yeah i mean it takes under two minutes to rent an item or list an item so all you'd have to do is either go to app store or go to google play download the free app um, create a profile and you can list an item um you know just very similar to vestia collective or Depop, right. um, if you're familiar with those apps as well. the It's it's a very sleek and clean sort of um, way of making listings. Um, 
And equally, renting is pretty much the same with an Airbnb sort of element where, you know, you're, you're sort of uh, advised to communicate with the lender and, you know, tell them what you're going to use the item for and also discuss how you're going to make the exchange, uh, which is usually in person or through Royal Mail track delivery or through our on-demand career partner within London. And how is, uh, you know, how different is renting from rotating itself? What's in it for the brand um, and what's in it for the, you know, the peer-to-peer renting solution? Can you? Um, You mean like brands that are doing rental themselves? Right. Yeah. So I think with, um, with Urban Outfitters and, you know, now they've been talking about Gunny also doing a rental service. I think for them, it's really about um, ensuring that they always have repeat customers um, and I think from what I understand with Urban Outfitters is that you can rent and then you also have an option to buy, although I might be wrong. So I think the focus really isn't that much on sustainability. Whereas when we talk about peer to peer, it's very much about using what you already have or using what someone else already has um, rather than sort of, you know, going out and buying new or, you know, uh, subscribing to new seasons and trends that Ghani might be putting out through their rental service or Urban Outfitters might be putting out through their rental service. So I guess, you know, I think the whole the, the whole thing that we do differently is that we don't buy any inventory or stock whatsoever. And I think that really plays to our benefits because, well, firstly, from my point of view, it's capital light. And I guess for the others, f- for our potential renters, they see much more variety of different brands of different sizes on there. So, you know, if you're, if you're a subscriber of um, the Urban Outfitters rental, service or the Gunny rental service, you would only see from the brands that are under Urban Outfitters or all the Gunny clothing. So, you know, we have much more variety in that sense as well. Um, and yeah, and, and again, we're very much based on community, which I think maybe is something that even Rent the Runway doesn't quite, um, you know, have. Um, because I feel like Rent the Runway, it's all about dressing in a more cost-effective manner, whereas we are really about sort of... Um, finding a way to bring the renters and the lenders together and think more about being, you know, conscious about what we're consuming. Right. You know, that's interesting. You talk a little bit about community. Um, One of your customers, I think Flo Van, um, she started out with renting a piece from your site and eventually went down to help out with your PR. So it's obvious that your community is at the core of by rotation, but do you anticipate um, any challenges as you expand? How do you think you can scale the current, uh, you know, more intimate community of rotators into a global movement? Sure. Yeah, there's there's definitely a question about scale, uh, but I like to think of it sort of, um, you know, as like a snowballing effect. Like we do want to have ambassadors in different cities, you know, in different organizations to help us build a community within them. Uh, rather than, you know, sort of me always having to have a presence and trying to like, you know, meet each person individually and get them on board with the bi rotation mm-hmm. concept. Um, I guess, you know, yeah. um, I've spoken to people about this in the past and they've likened it to the Tupperware effect, um, you know, back in the day when there were Tupperware parties. Um, so I, that's how we want to build it. You know, we do want to still have a very um, personal element to it. And I think how we do that as well as we make, our customers, our users, you know, our rotators feel very, um, very much part of by rotation by including them in conversations, by including them in our community events, by featuring them on our social, you know, um, social media platforms and market panels. Right. And I think they love that. They love sort of, you know, the, the feeling that they're part of a movement. Um, and I guess one brand that does that really well is Glossier. And, you know, that, that would definitely be one of my inspirations behind um our company anyway so that's what i kind of want to do i want to keep it organic Uh, i know everyone uses that word a lot but i do i Mm -hmm. I do want to have that that human element to it and you know show how it's it's not a you know we're not just sort of a well we're not like a fashion house or a designer brand we're a community of people and you know at the end of the day because we're very much like airbnb where we're a platform that's connecting a lender and a renter, um, you know, that is our main service to, to provide a platform to create a community that has those two and, you know, connect them. Right. I think, you know, even with Glossier, I think one of the reasons they've been really excellent at creating this community because 
of just how they look at the community itself. They're not calling themselves a beauty mm -hmm. brand. If you see their bio on Instagram, they're talking about how they're creating a beauty ecosystem. So it's always about the people and even feedback and things like that around the product are very transparent in that, you know, if they, they couldn't create like a milky jelly cleanser in a smaller size initially, but there were a lot of people mm -hmm. that were being stopped at the airport and the product would be mm -hmm. thrown away. Um, and they were like, you asked, we listened, and now we're going to bring you a smaller size that you can carry on your, you know, mm -hmm. on your flights. So I just think they, they've been, I think because they've been so connected to their community, that's kind of how they've grown it. And I, I can see that that's something you can completely do with Viridation as so, well. I hope so, yeah. Yeah. But, you know, um, I think what might be interesting is also if you could tell us of any interesting anecdotes or stories that have happened in the last five, six months that have really, uh, you know, touched you or things that make you feel like, you know, you guys have really connected with your uh, rotators. Yeah. Um, so there's definitely one I remember, um, this is maybe like three months ago, where someone was renting one of my pieces. And uh, when I sort of, um, you know, I met them in person, and we realized we worked quite close to each other because I was still working at my firm back then. Um, we realized we were working close to each other. So we met during a uh, lunch break and, you know, she started talking to me and saying like, oh, you know, what do you think about this concept? And, you know, um, is this your first time renting your items out to anyone? And I said, oh, um, I'm actually, you know, the one who created it. And she was very excited <laughs> okay. about it, uh, which is great. And, you know, um, so she took a few photos and she sent them to me. And when we met up for her to return the item to me, she, uh, you know, when I opened the bag, when I got home later that night, um, I saw that she had given me a card. Um, I still have that card, actually. Um, basically, you know, the card said something like, it's amazing what you're doing. And, you know, uh, this takes guts and, you know, keep going because I think you're on to something. So that was really nice to have, you know, people who, you know, I, I didn't know at all who had just trialed it as a customer and, you know, really thought that, you know, this concept was sort of, you know, something that could work and, and, they, and that they had a good experience. So uh, that was a really nice sort of memory. And I still keep that card because it's kind of nice to like, you know, it's, it's not all about, um, you know, getting some big names or like, you know, influencers or whatever to support you. Um, I do really think that our end customer is the paying customer. And this was an example of that. Right. Um, and, you know, I'm glad that they loved it because... It was someone who was also, you know, working in finance, you know, had a very similar background to me. And, and, you know, that's exactly how I thought that this product would be for someone who's, you know, a working um, professional who likes fashion, who has disposable income, um, but doesn't want to, you know, spend it um, all the time on new fashion trends or on payday. So it's kind of a, a nice way to sort of, um, you know, get my proof of concept again. Um, and then another one definitely was uh, when someone in New York um, rented a dress from someone in Manchester. And, you know, these two people, we didn't know either of them and they didn't know each other either. But, um, you know, they they rotated, as we call it, between each other. Um, she had worn her dress to the races um, a few months ago. And this renter was also going to wear them to races in York. So um, it was kind of it was kind of cute to see you know, her getting inspired by what she wore to the races and, you know, thinking, oh, I could also wear this to the races that I'm going to. And yeah, now we have photos of both of them, you know, two women who look different, who style their outfits different, but they both wore the same Nadine Meravi dress to the races. And it's just kind of nice. And, you know, we always get quotes from them. Uh, and they had a smooth transaction, which was great for us to know that the uh, Royal Mail track delivery that we've advised our rotators to use does in fact work. That's a really nice customer story, right? And at the end of the day, these are the kind of stories that matter, like how the end experiences and how the end customer feels about the product. You know, these days it's all about the micro influencers and that's your family and friends. And I guess that's what we're really after. We're after like word of mouth. We're after, you know, people being very proud to share that they rented their item and they rented it through our app. Right. And I also think that this is way bigger on the authenticity because it's coming from, you know, a place of just genuine satisfaction with the product as opposed to just always asking people to pay to write about, you know, a brand exactly. or a service. That, that, that's exactly what I want. And I think, again, you know, going back to Glossy, I think they do that really well when they show their, you know, their, their customers on their marketing channels. 
people love that. Right. And I think, I think they've done really interesting things even with just their team and, you know, the diversity that they bring in with uh, different types of makeup for different skin types and everything. It's yeah, it's amazing. Um, um, so you had mentioned that uh, the person who had left the card for you was somebody who's kind of an ideal biotation customer, someone who, you know, kind of has a professional career, but also loves fashion, etc. Um, you know, I want to talk a little bit about your career in finance itself. So how do you use your experience in finance to guide you in this new in this new venture? Do you believe that it's an asset that can be helpful in making more strategic, uh, you know, business decisions? Yeah, I think um, it. it- I think that's an interesting question and it does come up quite often obviously in conversations with um with you know potential investors and press and well you know even sort of you know um you know people that we're meeting day to day um to get on board of using the app. Um I think it's definitely been a huge asset because I've been able to use the commercial side of it which is you know financial modeling, um analysis, um negotiation. I mean that's a really big one as well. And I think a, another big part of it, when I was sort of making recommendations to our portfolio managers and our traders, I always had to sort of pitch an idea um, and essentially sell a trade recommendation to them. And, you know, I think that sort of really built up my confidence onto, as to how to convince people to do what I want without, well, you know, straight up manipulating them. Um, and I guess, you know, um, that's been very useful when I've been meeting people and trying to convince them to you know, give by rotation a trial, um, even though they know nothing about me, nothing about the company, you know, it's only six months old now. Um, so I think that's been very useful. I would definitely say a big part of what I built in the past six years during my, in my experience as, you know, working as an investment analyst would definitely be the confidence. Um, you know, I do feel very comfortable speaking to people of all backgrounds, um, you know, be it cultural or like, age or from different industries I think that's been very useful in sort of building me up um, and obviously you know there I, I do think that the background and the training that I received made me I guess you know hard working and you know diligent and you know always sort of determined I guess um, to re- to you know reach my goals so I definitely think there's a work ethic that I built through my experience which uh, which I'm not sure I might have been able to do so if I were always sort of working for myself. Um, so yeah, there's a discipline that also came along with it. Right. Um, so I think that kind of brings us to, you know, our last question. Um, as a founder, how would you define a great retail experience? Is it about the touch and feel of a product, the store experience, the merchandise, you know, hosting little pop-up community events or how convenient the model is? Uh, you know, what what keeps shoppers coming back for more, in your opinion, and especially in your experience in the last six months? So I think it's definitely been great on the press side um, because we're so young um, and sometimes, and, and, you know, the concept is so new. Uh, people can be a bit hesitant at first, but, um, you know, I have to say a lot of the press that we're getting, it's been getting a lot of goodwill to us, which has really gotten people who were, you know, users of the platform, but hadn't listed their own items. They had just rented items to now begin to start listing their items as well. So there's a confidence that's really, um, you know, that we've really gotten uh, on the back of all this good press. And I would definitely say the second thing would definitely be the community events. Uh, what we really saw and have understood is that people love meeting each other. Um, and I think definitely as you get older, as you get busy in your work life, you know, um, in your personal life, um, a lot of people sort of, um, you know, they want this connection and they want to be able to meet other people outside their work and their, you know, uh, personal lives. And I guess that's what we've created with our community. Um, we do some nice events where, you know, rotators can meet each other in person. They can also try on some of the clothing that people have listed on the platforms if they've brought it along with them. So it's kind of a nice get together, you know, it's free, it's in central London. Um, and we want to do more of this when we expand to different cities within UK. Um, so I, I think those have been the key things for us. Um, you know, it's word of mouth, um, it's press, and it's really getting people together. So I guess that brings us to maybe like, you know, the physical side of it, since it's a completely, um, you know, online only mobile app only platform, you know, we do want to have a bit of a physical presence, but that doesn't mean we want to have like a pop-up or a physical store. Yeah, I think it's 
interesting to have, you know, a combination of both because these community events that you guys are doing kind of brings um, the rotators together and gives them a feel for what bi rotation is all about. And I think, like you said, it gives them a sense of belonging mm-hmm. and, you know, community and to meet people with like minded interests or things that they might like. And I think that's also a very important element that sometimes I feel like brands can discount um, to really build that community of people that can interact and engage with just the brand itself as a platform to do that, you know? Um, Yeah. And I definitely, I also feel like, um, but they might want the convenience option of being able to do things online where they can go back home and make their own decisions after coming to a community event and trying on things. Mm -hmm. Right. Totally agree. And I I think it's in great because, um, you know, you know, this generation, especially also the newer generation, we, you know, a lot of them have like lower attention spans. So I almost feel like you have to keep things exciting for them all the time. And that's where, you know, these, these pop-up events and these community events, they're really useful because, you know, they're not always there. They're effervescent, you know, um, you, you know, you, you'll be able to sort of, um, you know, come at sort of different community events and there'll be different things going on. There'll be different people, there'll be different clothes, there'll be different, you know, uh, activities and panels. So I feel like it's good to keep things, you know, uh, mixed with them and offer them a new experience each time. Absolutely. Well, thank you so much, Ishita. I think we're, you know, at the end of our podcast, I had a wonderful time. Thank you so much for, uh, you know, the opportunity. You know, I think I got to learn a lot about pirotation, what you're trying to create in the rental space. And, you know, it was just great to know how you started your whole journey. So more power to you and we'll definitely be rooting for you and watching, you know, pirotation as you guys keep Thank you so much growing. for the support. For all things around AI retail and the new era of shopping, tune into the View podcast at view.ai to get the scoop. Until then, bye-bye.